An Iranian refugee's dream finally comes true. But he can't stop, Kent, Washington U. Sirvan Marathi doesn't feel right. He knows he should be relieved to be in America. He knows he should be, he knows this part of his journey should be the best one you living in a suburban Seattle apartment, learning English, starting a new job and trying to make friends in a place that has embraced him. But mostly he feels anguish. I am not happy, but I am not sad, says Marathi, 25. My dad is gone. Marathi, who moved to Kent this year with his aunt, is one of just 103 Iranian refugees to arrive in the US over the last seven months. He is among 12, in an era when strict quotas and at times vague government restrictions have knocked the US from its long-standing place as the nation that takes in the most permanent refugees, Marathi's case is an example of how changes to the system have resulted in confusion and families being split apart. It used to take most refugees 18 months to 2 years from their application with the United Nations to their arrival in the US. It took Marathi 4 years. Three times since 2017, Marathi and his family you father, mother, brother, sister and aunt you were issued plane tickets to the US from their temporary home in Turkey. Three times the tick doctors in Seattle were ready to treat his father, Side Marathi, for a bulging blood vessel by his heart. But in September, Said was the main refugee applicant for most of the family, and his death did more than devastate them. It meant the others, it's anyone's guess who will be approved to come to the US these days, said Nikki Smith, who directs the Seattle office of the International Rescue Committee, which prepared for years for the Marathi's arrival. As a family, that, that's not the case anymore. This winter, Sirvan Marathi and his aunt, Salt Anat Marathi, were handed airline tickets to the US. It's unclear why they were approved and the rest weren't. A State Department just past midnight on February 6, the travelers landed in Seattle after two flights totaling 17 hours from Istanbul, Turkey. It was snowing, Sirvan tried to smile at the social worker who greeted him, but he couldn't manage it. His face was blank, Salt Anat began to cry. Two former neighbors, don't worry, all your troubles are behind you, Masood Vaisai told them. He had made the same, my sister is the only person I have in the world, Salt Anat said as she wailed, speaking of Sirvan's mom. I am sad I had, Nadia Mousavi, Vaisai's girlfriend, held Salt Anat's head to her chest. Your sister will come, Sirvan and Salt Anat stayed with their friends that night. Mousavi cooked, but the Marathis barely ate. Sirvan stayed up, I am alone here in a country where I am supposed to start a new life, he told his mother, Fanuz Marathi. He had never lived, Fanuz was happy yet heartbroken. Your father died. No one is helping, Sirvan promised he would call every night. The next day, the refugees had an orientation with their caseworker. They saw their new home, a worker from the resettlement agency, set up free furniture two single beds, a plastic dining table and four chairs, pots, pans and a lamp. It would cost Sir, Sirvan had just two questions, when could he start taking English lessons? And how could he hook, it feels like a lot of time has passed and none has passed at all, Sirvan says of the three months since then. My body is in a, he used to work in a clothing factory and as a forklift driver in Turkey. This month, the job is a 10 minute drive but it takes Sirvan nearly an hour between a bus ride and walking before he arrives at 6 am. Over 4 10 hours, I have to send money to my mom, he says. I am just half, Salt Anat, 45, used to work as a dessert baker in Turkey. She held no job, I am happy to be at home, because all I want to do is cry, she says. Twice a week, the two walk down the street to a language center to take an English class with other refugees. Vaisai convinced, she hates that she can't cook for her sister, Sirvan says. To keep in touch with friends back home, Sirvan opens up by an STAgram. A new me coming soon. He posted a week after landing in the US, with an image of a battery bar that was nearly recharged. 
Every few weeks, he uploads a variation on the same photo of himself in his white soccer shorts and jersey, standing on the field you sometimes giving a thumbs up. He broadcasts live on INS Geogram as he rides along on basis Uber drives, documenting his explorations of suburban Seattle to the sounds of Kurdish pop. Recently, US officials told him that the rest of the family you his mother, 26-year-old sister and 22-year-old brother you were approved to move to Kent, but no flight tickets have been issued. Fanus, 47, is not hopeful. Maybe within three months, she rarely leaves the apartment in Turkey since her husband's death. She prays for him, the green roller bags their father packed for his journey to the United States still stand in a corner of the apartment. With a 10-hour time difference and more than 7,000 miles between them, Fanus has turned to social media to connect with her son. She watches his vid- I miss the way he talks, she says. I look every day at, Sirvan grapples with his emotions on INS Tiagram. Every few weeks, the day after Mother's Day, he uploaded a photo from a year before, showing him with Fanus Indulnia in the Kaiseri apartment. With love only for you, Sirvan hasn't yet been to tourist sites like Seattle's Space Needle or Pike Place Market, but he's found other spots that make him feel more at home. He recently made, the same day, he posted a shot of himself with the soccer team. While the rest of them, the caption said, had a good day with friends. Copyright 2019 Los Angeles Times Visit the Los Angeles Times at www.lawteams.com Distributed by Tribune Content Agency, LLC